In this lecture, we're going to continue with the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, last time, we ended up with two forms of the first law of thermodynamics. dQ is equal to C sub V dt plus PD alpha, which was the intensive form of the equation. And dQ is equal to C sub V dt plus PdV, which was the extensive form of the equation. And recall last time that CV was defined as the amount of heat that was required to increase the temperature of the molecules of a substance under constant specific volume or under constant volume, depending upon whether or not you're the intensive or the extensive form of the equation. In this lecture, we're going to introduce the concept of the specific heat at constant pressure, which is the same sort of definition, except that the conditions are held at P equals constant, uh, which is more representative of what actually goes on in the atmosphere. If you think about uh, uh, the absorption of solar radiation of, of an air parcel, that air parcel is going to absorb that energy and be subjected to constant pressure while that uh, absorption is going on, as opposed to constant volume. And so what we're going to do is we're going to transform this equation from a constant volume assumption to a constant pressure assumption and see if we can get a different and more useful form of the first law of thermodynamics. So in order to do that, we're going to start off with a review of uh, calculus. So dQ is equal to C sub V dt plus the differential of P alpha minus alpha dP. Now why is this transformation possible? Because if you do the chain rule on this, uh, the differential of a two variable system is the uh, second times the derivative of the first plus the first times the derivative of the second. And you'll notice the alpha dp here subtracted off from alpha dp here, it basically equals zero, and you're left with the original equation of c sub v dt plus pd alpha. And, but from the first law of thermodynamics, excuse me, from the ideal gas law, you can recall that P alpha is equal to the specific gas constant for a mixture times T. And we're going to go ahead and substitute in the specific gas constant and temperature into the differential of P alpha, which means that we can also do the differential of the specific gas constant times temperature. Since this is a constant, it moves out of the, of the uh, differential. And so you're left with PD alpha is equal to R sub M dt. Putting that back into the equation for the first law of thermodynamics, you get dq is equal to C sub V dt plus the specific gas constant for the mixture times dt minus alpha dp. And what's interesting is if you instead allow this to be a constant pressure process, the dp will go to zero and you're left with dq is equal to uh, C sub V dt plus R sub M dt, and we're going to define um, C sub P as the combination of C sub V plus R sub M. And when we do that, you'll end up with dQ is equal to C sub P dt minus alpha dP, which is another form of the first law of thermodynamics uh, that can be very useful for us. The analog for the extensive form of the equation would be dq is equal to c sub p dt minus v dp using a similar type of transformation, except uh, doing it uh, from this initial equation. So we now have two forms of the ideal gas law, excuse me, of the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, one that uh, has c sub v dt in it and uh, has a change in the volume and one that has a change in the pressure. Uh, and so those are useful depending upon the specifics of the calculation that you're being asked to do. You can decide on which one of these equations <coughs> might be the most useful for you. I'd like to move on <coughs> and introduce the concept of enthalpy. And uh, enthalpy is essentially defining the uh, response of a system that is a uh, amount of incremental amount of heat that's been added to it at constant pressure. And we're going to define the enthalpy as the internal energy plus P alpha, or for the extensive form, uh, capital H is going to be equal to the internal energy plus PV. 
And if we take the differential of each of those, um, then you'll end up with dH is equal to the change in the internal energy plus the differential of P alpha. When you expand that out, you'll end up with this expression. Uh, similarly, for the extensive form, you'll end up with that expression. And you might recall that one of our very first forms of the first law of thermodynamics that we used uh, was dQ is equal to dU plus P d alpha, which is right here, dU plus P d alpha. So you can take this substituted into here, and dH is now equal to dQ plus alpha dP, and you can rearrange this into dQ is equal to dH minus alpha dP. And you recall from back over here, the dQ is equal to C sub P dT minus alpha dP, and so it's clear from this equation that dH must be in fact C sub P dT. And that's uh, another way to essentially define our enthalpy. And likewise, for the extensive form of the equation, you'll end up with the change in the enthalpy is equal to C sub P dT. What's interesting about this is that the specific heat at constant pressure is greater for a gas than the specific heat at constant volume. And likewise, the change in the enthalpy is always going to be greater than or equal to the change in the internal energy of the substance. And the way to describe that is if we have an air parcel that's held at constant volume and you put energy into the system, dQ, um, <clears throat> that energy uh, will actually be going into uh, the change of the temperature because there's no work being required to expand this air parcel uh, because it's being done at a constant volume and so the only way for that parcel to remain at a constant volume is to actually increase the pressure. Um, so that air parcel uh, does not do any external work against its environment. Uh, in contrast, when you do a constant pressure uh, ex uh, transformation, you put heat energy into this air parcel, it can now, that energy can now be distributed amongst changing the temperature of the air molecules and expanding it to do work against the environment. Um, as a result, you will not end up with as large of a temperature change for a constant uh, pressure as you would for a constant volume. And that's one of the reasons we like to talk about enthalpy, um, because enthalpy is related to the change of temperature of a uh, constant pressure process.